God is good. And all the time, God is good. And all the time, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I see a glow on your face. If your neighbor didn't tell you that, find another neighbor that believes the one who lives in you and tell them that I see a glow on your face. Now, you know, let's change it. Look at your neighbor. Someone doesn't have a name. My, my sister, I am your neighbor. <laughs> find yourself a neighbor and, and you tell the neighbor, I see a glow on my face. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Amen. 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 This morning, we want to continue our series on the power of salvation. Someone say power. Say power. Say I got the power. Oh, I'm not feeling your energy this morning. Say I got the power. Amen. Now, this, this, this year, it is all about exercising the power. Exercising the power because we have the power. So now we want to use the power to make sure that everything in our lives go according to the plan of God. Amen. Amen. So the power of salvation, last week we treated it briefly. I'll just give you guys that were not here last week a quick recap on what we studied last week and on Friday as well. So last week we looked at Romans chapter 1, verse 15 verse to 16. It says, so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed, say I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is what is the gospel of Christ what what is the gospel of Christ oh are you are you afraid don't you have power it is a it is the power of God say the gospel is the power to salvation for everyone who believes so everyone it is not just John or my brother Emmanuel, or my sister over there. It is everyone. There's no discrimination when it comes to the gospel and the power of God. For everyone, the only condition is that you believe. Tell your neighbor, believe. For, for the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Now, we, we also study um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, that the message of the cross is foolishness for those <laughs> who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, the message of the cross. So if the gospel is the power of God, and the message of the cross is the power of God, then the gospel is the message of the cross. Amen. Now last Friday, those who came, we studied that perceptions, or, or, or the reason why it is foolishness to one party and it is a gain to another, because for some of you, you benefit. For some of us, we benefit from the power. And because we benefit from, from the power, we, we, we deem it very good. But if, if for you, it, it doesn't benefit you, right? You don't think it's good. And then what, would, what did we say? Who remembers what we said about this? That you might be starting an idea. You might start a business. And a friend of yours, you tell this friend of yours about this business. Because they don't see themselves in the plan, they discourage you. But the moment you say, I'm, I want to start, keep playing. The moment you say, I want to start a stick thing. I want to start a, a company. But I want you to be the manager. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Are you with me? So, so for some people who do not see the benefit of the gospel, because they do not know, it is foolishness. But to you, it is what? The power of God. Say, I have the power. Amen. So today we want to, let's go to the next slide. Today we want to look at the, the source of the power. The source of the power. Say the source of the power. Now we all know that electricity, all these lights that we see here, comes from what? A source. <laughs> Some of you guys like the slide because you see the beautiful woman over there. Who knows this beautiful woman? As a matter of fact, let me, let me go and stand there. We are matching today. <laughs> Take a picture of me right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to Photoshop myself in the picture. Now, now, oh, yeah, fed me, fed me next to her. <laughs> nice one. It's a nice picture. Now, that's my beautiful wife over there. You see, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you will receive power. And you will do exploits. You do things that go contrary to your natural nature. You, 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 you will pass your exams. You will heal the sick. You will be able to give love to your enemies. 
You'll be able to stand here in front of people and talk as if you do it naturally. I have to tell you that when I started, when I was, when I was a young guy, I was very, very shy. If I, would, I was telling the team the other day, if a girl at school, Ima, at school, eh? In fact, God has been good, eh? If a girl would talk to me, I had pimples. Oh, Jesus. Pimples face. And if a guy would talk to me, I could literally shed my pants. Mercy. Oh, Jesus. I was very shy. But when the power comes into you, you do things that boggle your mind. At a point in time, you look at yourself and you're like, hey, is it me standing here? So did I manage to start a business this year? Naomi, you start a business this year in the name of Jesus. You guys are not saying amen for her. I I want you to say the amen with boldness because you have power. Say amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you for that. Amen. That's also a weak amen. I said God bless you. Awesome. So Acts chapter 1 verse 8, says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And last week we understood that the Holy Spirit coming upon us, it's like, it's like he soaks us. It's like tie and die. That's what we learned last week. It's like tie and die. He soaks us. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he clothes you. And, and we learned that power was dunamis. <laughs> I love the word dunamis. Dunamis meaning dynamite. It means what else? Dynamic, it's your character, it's your nature. It's dynamo, which is power, which is a source, like a battery. So you are a source of power, my sister. You are a source of power. Now it says when the spirit comes upon you, you will receive power and, and will be my witness, telling people all about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, this morning we want to look at what happens when the spirit comes upon you. Amen. So we go to the next slide. What happens when the Spirit comes upon you? The first thing, you can note this down. The first thing, write this down. The first thing that happens when the Spirit comes upon you is that there is life. Amen. There is life. Say, I have life. Like I said, we want to look at a few things that happen when the Spirit comes upon you. So that this year, in every situation that you find yourself, once you understand that you carry the Spirit of God, You have control. It's about control. Power is control. So you have control over every situation. Amen. Amen. So Psalms 104 verse 30 is a a verse that changed my whole message. It says this. When you send forth your spirit. Let's read together. When you send forth your spirit and give them breath. They are created and you replenish the face of the earth. Replenish meaning restore. So when power comes, my sister, life is given and there is restoration. I don't know about you, but if you are here, you've lost in 2020. God told me to tell you that you are going to gain more in 2021. If you have lost one in 2020, you are receiving double in 2021. You are not saying amen. If you have lost one in 2020, you are receiving double in 2021. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 14, he says, Now God has not only raised the Lord, but will will also raise us through his power. So when, when Jesus rose from the dead, when God raised them up, when the Spirit of God came over him and he was quickened, he didn't come all alone, but we were also raised from the dead, which tells us that we were dead. We were dead. 2020, some people were dead amongst us. 2021, now you find yourself in the presence of life. Amen. Now, what I love about this is John 3, 7 says, marvel not, I say, it's one of my favorite verses, it says, marvel not, I say unto you, you must be born again. If there has to be a, a new life, that means there has to be a new birth. So we understand here that the power that comes upon us brings life, but that means that the power that comes upon us gives birth. So this year, because you have received power, you give birth to certain things. You give birth to your twins. Yeah, I'm talking about myself. Don't be jealous. <laughs> you give birth to your company. You are not saying amen. You give birth, you give birth to your healing. Amen. By his stripes you are healed. 
So since Jesus took all every disease on the cross, every disease that we could ever have has been crucified. So I decree, I decree and declare that there is healing that has been risen in your life. Amen. God is good. Now, when I was thinking about this rebirth, 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 new life, I was thinking about this, then I, I, I came to the, the medical term resuscitation. resuscitation. Re, someone say resuscitation, very difficult word. Hey, resuscitation. But Grace, come and explain to me what resuscitation is. Today we preach together. Come and explain to me what resuscitation is, actually. Resuscitation. Who, oh, you can come on stage. Who, who knows what resuscitation is? The nurses here, what, what, what is resuscitation? Bringing someone back into life. My sister Josephine, you're also a nurse. What else can you say about it? Reanimator? Uh-huh. Hey. <laughs> so resuscitation. Tell me a bit about resuscitation. Tell us a bit about resuscitation. Okay, so resuscitation is when you are bringing someone back to life, as Sister Josephine said, and you only do it, you only perform it on someone who is Let's dead. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah. So if... Um, someone is not breathing or there's no pulse. Hold on. So you are telling me that if a person is dead, how do we define death? Absence of breath. Ooh. Did you guys know that? That death is the absence of breath. So it's not necessarily that my heart is not working. Mm -hmm. But it is the absence of breath. The main essence, essence of, of, of okay. death is the absence of breath. Therefore, the main essence of life is what? The presence of breath. 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 Breathing. Some of you are taking too much uh, oxygen here. <laughs> Breathing. Out. See, none of us calculated how to breathe in, how to breathe out. That's how God, good God is. You don't need to think about it. You just do it. So let's continue. You said it's the absence of breath. Of breath yeah. So, so what you do is you check the pulse. You check if someone is breathing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have any of the two you start cpr so that's heart massage you massage the heart yeah you massage the heart <laughs> ah, I, knew, I, I knew you could massage the body yeah, the back and stuff the you can massage the heart yeah. wow isn't isn't god so wonderful that when we were dead he did not just raise us he didn't just give us breath in, in by saying take breath but he massaged our hearts if your heart is broken, God has massaged your heart. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's continue there. So when you are massaging the heart, what you're actually trying to achieve is to pump the oxygen that is left around in your body so mm. that the person will come back to life. Mm. And that's why you do mouth on mouth as well to give, to actually to give mimic, breath. yeah, to mimic the breath. You see, in the beginning when God created, God said, Genesis 1, 1 verse 21, he says, let us make man in our own image. And God created us by breathing into us. We should demonstrate it. Ah, my sister, I told you you would have to demonstrate. So, I don't want to fail. Without the mouth or mouth. Hey. <laughs> All right, so, so this is me. Okay, so this is John. And then what you do is you check. I'm sorry. So you check if he's breathing. So you feel like this. You look, you listen. If you don't see any, um, how do you say it? Uh, if the lungs don't come up, you know he's not breathing. You feel it. And then you check the pulse. So the pulse, you check it here. Then you feel if you feel any heartbeats. If not, then you start. So I'm going to do it. Need heart yeah. And then you do like this. So you put your hands like this and you do like this. I don't want to do it hard because it's painful. If you're alive, it's painful. Okay. And then you do this two minutes and then you breathe. <laughs> <laughs> poo -poo, poo -poo, poo -poo. I'm alive! Yeah! <laughs> Come on, give it up for my wife over there. <laughs> Amen. Now, you see, all this that we're seeing, these things that we learn in school, there is someone who created it. It's nothing new. In the eyes of God, nothing is new. Because we see in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, that and if the Spirit of Christ who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then, say then, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore your life, your mortal, short-lived. 
short-lived. I love the, the word short-lived, meaning that our lives before was, was short. But when we came back to life, we gained life that is eternal. If, I said this last week, if you have lost a, a brother or a sister or an auntie or an uncle during last year, you've not lost them because they have eternal life. One day we'll see them face to face. Amen. They shall live life perishable, but his, his spirit who dwells in us. And what I, I came to understand about this is that us coming back to life is not just coming to live that you are alive for our life's sake, but you being restored to your rightful position, your rightful place, your rightful place. Amen. Say, I am restored. And when we talk about the rightful place, then we have to go back to the beginning. How things, what, what, what was our actual position? What is your actual position, my, my sister? What is your position? That's the question you have to ask yourself. That what is my position in this world? When we look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, it says that, And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Subdue it. Subdue it. Have control. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living creature, every living creature that moves upon the earth. Say, I have control. Say, I'm the boss. I'm the boss of every situation in my life. After this service, when you go out there, you look at every mountain in your life. Every mountain in your life. Every giant, every Goliath in your life. And you look at that, that mountain and you tell that mountain, be moved. For faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. And you have, you, have, you have the whole being of Jesus Christ living in you. Amen. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. So what happens when, when they do the resuscitation, when they pump and it's not working, is that they take this thing and then they, they put it on hard. And what, what did they say? Clear, poof. Clear, poof. And then they, after they do it a number of times, the person comes back to life. This is what the Spirit did for us on the cross. When Jesus was, Jesus was raised, that same Spirit that... So, ah, so, so, the, so I can just imagine the Holy Spirit looking at Jesus and saying, Hey, Jesus, you are in hell. It is not your place. You are living a life of hell. It is not your place, Merv. So then the Holy Spirit comes down to you. You think you are getting comfortable in hell. No, no, my sister, my brother, this life that you are experiencing is not what God meant for you. He meant for you to live a life of abundance. So then the Spirit comes on you and he puts the, he puts, he, he, like in Genesis chapter 1, the Spirit was hovering over the earth. It was hovering over the earth and darkness was on the face of the deep. Right? And then when he does this, he says, let there be light. Poof. And then you are like, oh, I don't want to go to church. I'm tired. Let there be light. Poof. Oh, I sinned yesterday. I sinned yesterday. Let there be light. Poof. Then you are beginning to realize who you are. Let there be light. Poof. And at a point in time, when he puts, the, when he puts his power, he puts his power upon you, it quickens your mortal body. And you come alive. Say, I'm alive. Now, we see in Genesis that it's about taking dominion. Dominion simply means taking control. You only have control when you take care of stuff. So you have control over the things you take care of. So my, my sister Josephine has four children. She has control over them because she's the one who feeds them. Right? So dominion here means taking control. It is time for you to get up and take control over your life. Because this life that you have now, it is not of your own. We were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Amen. Just let's go to the next slide. Now, what I love about the Spirit bringing us back to life is that He, he restores us back to our rightful position. And I, I want to tell you a story in the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 38. When you go home, you can read this whole passage. It is about jo It's about Joseph. Now, Joseph in the Bible is a type of Jesus. 
So like last Friday, we came to understand that Zacchaeus, actually the story of Zacchaeus is also a type of Jesus. Because Zacchaeus means innocent and he was on a tree. So when Jesus saw Zacchaeus, he saw an innocent man on the tree. And he could picture himself on the cross. And therefore he didn't consider the people around him. And he called upon Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus come down. And he changed his position. The same way Joseph had a dream. I have a dream. Like Martin Luther King, Joseph had had a dream. He had a dream that one day he will be in a position of power. Say position of power. Many of you, as I'm speaking, you can picture yourself. You can see yourself. You can see that promotion. You can see that promotion. But don't let your brothers and your sisters discourage you. Don't let them discourage you. They will put you in a pit. But you come out. They will sell you to Potiphar. You will be tempted, but you overcome it. You will end up in the prison. After years after you have seen this, you have heard this message, you will end up in a prison. A prison of bad relationship. And you will think there's no way for you to come out. But don't forget, my sister, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And He has anointed you to preach the gospel. Pharaoh had a dream. And no one can interpret this dream. And Joseph was called upon to interpret the dream. See, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you see things that natural eyes do not see. You know things that the natural do not know. Amen. Tell your, tell your neighbor, get into the Spirit. Be your real self. Be a spiritual being. Be highly spiritual. <laughs> now, let's read this. Grace, maybe you can read this for us quickly because of our time. I'm not really a quick reader. So. Gen- Genesis chapter 41, verse 38 to 44 says, So Pharaoh asked his officials, Can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? You, you see, everywhere you go, you have to be obviously filled with the Spirit of God. Because otherwise, when the opportunity comes, they will pass you by. If it is not evident, if it is not seen on you, right, that you have the Spirit of God, people will not know. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. Whoa! Whoa! So now we even understand, I didn't get this, I was just seeing it right now, that when the power of the Lord comes upon you, right, when you have the spirit of the Lord, you have intelligence. You are wise. Thank you. You have intelligence and you are wise. Let's continue to go on. You will be in charge of my courts and all my people will take orders from you. Mm. Only I sitting on my throne will have a ranking higher than yours. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I, dare, I hereby push you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it on Joseph's mm. finger. He sealed him by the power of the blood. Mm. Then he continues. I, I love this. Let me, let me continue. Say, then he had Joseph ride in a chariot. This year you will ride in a nice car. Amen. You are not saying amen. You don't like amen. it. Amen. Oh, you want to still continue taking Trump? No. Or you want to go with Trump too? See, God is placing you on a chariot. You're not going to ride in a fiat anymore. Mm. It's time for us to move up. Amen. Because we are in positions of power. It says you ride in, 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 he clothes them as well in the fine linen. This year you will wear nice clothes. Amen. (laughs) I'm not talking about physical clothes. I'm talking about wealth. Amen. I'm talking about healing. Amen. I'm talking about sound mind. Your clothing will be sound mind. Amen. I'm talking about peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It will, it will close you. Amen. When you come into a room, everyone is zen. Mm. Amen. Amen. And then what I love here is that Joseph went, the, and, and when Joseph was walking about, there was a command shouted. Say command. command. There was a command shouted, kneel down. Kneel down. <laughs> every problem that you are facing every challenge that you are facing because of the blood of Jesus because by, by virtue of the finished works on the cross Amen. hey, my brother, my sister people will kneel down for you Amen. sicknesses will kneel down for you every Amen. challenge in your life will kneel down for you Amen. your family will kneel down for you Amen. Amen. Amen this is the gospel 
This is the power of the gospel. Exercising that which God has placed in us. Exercising that which God has deposited in us. Bringing that out. You cannot receive Jesus and be the same. It's, 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 by, by, it's, it's, it's impossible for you to receive Jesus and still crawl back in your den. It's impossible. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, spirit of timidity. I break every timidity in this building right now. It is time for us to rise. We are not timid. He gave us a spirit of power, of love, and discipline. I love my brother Junior very much because I, one thing I love about him the most is not even about his other gifts, but his discipline. We can all play FIFA. He will be playing FIFA. All of a sudden, you will see him anymore. All of us will play till the next night. And you will see him, before you realize, he will tell you, I was studying. Discipline. You are disciplined because you know what you carry. Don't use your power anyhow. Don't use your beauty anyhow. Don't use it anyhow. Praise the Lord. Now another, I'm now going to run you guys through because of our time. Let's quickly go. So now we have come to understand that when the, the power comes, it brings life. Right? It brings restoration to your rightful position. Then another thing that the power does, just go to the next slide. The other thing that the power does is that it will make your name great. <laughs> it will make, this one when I read it, I was like, oh, in the name of Jesus, I am going viral. It says in Luke chapter 4 verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of what? Today you will return home in the power of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and news. You see, it is a, it's a, what a consequence of him returning in the power of the Spirit. News will spread around you. News will spread throughout the whole country about Amsterdam City Church. You guys don't believe it. News will spread about Amsterdam City Church in the name of Jesus. Another thing that it does, let's go to the next one. I'm, I'm done. I'm just reading a few verses. The power provides. The power provides. It says this. His divine power, give me just uh, uh, five minutes. The divine power has given us everything. Everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Everything has been provided already. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 7 says this. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might, <laughs> the might of my hands have gained me this wealth. Say, but remember. When you make, when you make that million this year, <laughs> remember. It is not by might, it is not by power, but by what? The Spirit, he says this, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is who? It is He who gives you power to get wealth. I'm telling you, my brother, my sister, you have power to get wealth. This year, you will see wealth. Wealth. Someone say wealth. Let's go to the next one. His power does what? It protects. It protects. You are protected. You are protected. Luke 10 verse 19, he says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread over serpents and over scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall do what? Say, nothing shall hurt me. Nothing shall hurt my family. Nothing shall hurt my friends. Nothing shall hurt this church. In the name of Jesus, shout a big Amen. Now the last slide. Don't forget, after all that I'm telling you, you know, that, you know that the power is in you. You know the benefits of the power. Don't forget to turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it to the max. Turn it. You should understand that when you are turning it up, it is a process. Go from one, two, three, four. Some of you get comfortable when you reach five. You never go to the maximum of the, of the, of the power. This year, I want you to desire the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to desire the power of the Holy Spirit and turn it up. He says in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, he says, For the kingdom of God, I love this verse so much, for the kingdom of God does not consist of what? Talk, talk. Some of, we talk too much. We don't even, we don't do, we talk. Before you have even opened the company, you have told the whole country. 
You have put it on every post, every slide. We see it. We, I'll, I'll start business. We, I'll start business. We are not seeing the business. It's talk, 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 talk. I'll marry this year. You yourself, you've not even started working on yourself. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'll marry this year. You don't do your hair nice. Your, wake up, your makeup is not Mac. Oh, I'll, I'll marry this year. You've not got your driver's license. You say, I'm going to buy a car. Talk, talk. This year, I'll buy 10 cars. It's good. You profess it, but you work on it. Faith without works is what? Oh, Jesus, it is dead, but we are alive. So how are we living in the dead things? We have to rise up. The last verse that I want to give you. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 5. Proverbs is about wisdom. A word to the wise is what? It's enough. You are wise, so it should be enough. Thank you, I'm done. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 5. It says, a wise man is strong and a man of knowledge increases power. This is how you turn it up. You get knowledge about Jesus Christ. It's about the knowledge. It's about knowing. It's about knowing. It's about knowing. Because the devil, <laughs> the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes to give you abundant life. The devil is on your door knocking, but you have to flee. And, and Jesus is also on your door knocking, but you open your heart to him. Get to know the word of God. Get to know the word of God. Let his spirit fill you. This evening, this morning, we want to stand up on our feet.